From Columbia Pictures, a Screen Gems production. Hello. Oh, hello, Walter. It's Daddy, children. I was just thinking of you. You know, it's a shame you couldn't be here with us. It's so wonderful at the beach. Well, I'm glad you're enjoying yourself. How are the kids? Having the time of their lives. Well, you should see Charlie and Candy in their new swimsuit. And Charlie has a new trick he's dying to show you. <laughs> Lloyd Bridges. And, uh, where's Enoch? Enoch? <laughs> oh, Enoch's been out fishing. Has he, uh, has he caught anything? No, he hasn't caught anything. But he doesn't mind. He has more fun eating the bait. <laughs> when are you coming back, sweetheart? We thought we'd stay a couple of more days. Another couple of days? Honey, I'll call you back. Somebody just came in. Mr. Hathaway, I'm Bert Brockwood. I called this morning about that house you have for sale on Magnolia. Oh, yes, of course, Mr. Brockwood. Please, here. Sit right down, won't you? Certainly is good to see you. Here we are. I think you'll like this house. It's well built, price is right, and it's a nice, quiet neighborhood. Good. That's the reason I'm moving. I have one next door neighbor who raises dogs and another who's a pigeon fancier. Between the yapping and the flapping, I can't get a good night's sleep. <laughs> you won't have to worry about that here. You see, my wife and I live next door, and we don't raise either dogs or pigeons. <laughs> well, that's the main thing. I'd like my wife to look at this house with me. Uh, why don't we meet over there about uh, 3 o'clock? 3 o'clock's fine. Good. It might be a good idea if you brought your wife along. My missus will want to ask her questions about school. Uh, we have two boys. <laughs> well, my wife and the uh, children, <laughs> we have three. <laughs> well, they're down at the beach at her mother's for a couple of days. But I'll be glad to answer any questions. Okay. It'll be a pleasure to have nice, normal neighbors for a change. See you at 3 o'clock. 3 o'clock it is. Bye. <laughs> Halfway real, Lee Company. Oh, Eleanor, I'm just going to call you back. Walter, I've been thinking it's awfully selfish of us to stay here at Mother's another two days and leave you all alone. Now, honey, that's not being selfish at all. You stay for a couple of days. Promise me you will. Well, if you really want us to. I do, I do, I do. I do. Now listen, I'll call you back tomorrow. Fine, fine. I love you, honey. Love you. Bye. Bye. Poor Daddy. He misses us something fierce, but he's so unselfish. I know. Let's drive home today and surprise him. If we leave right now, we can be home by 3 o'clock. <laughs> Austin Purina Company of Checkerboard Square, makers of wheat checks, rice checks, and corn checks. With all three a new checks mates, presents The Hathaways, starring Peggy Cass, co-starring Jack Weston, and featuring the Marquee Chimps. on the dot. I like a man who's on time. This is Mr. Hathaway, my wife, Thelma. Well, you don't mind. And our youngest boy, Freddie. Oh, how are you, my little man? My, but you're a fine-looking boy. You're just saying that because you and Daddy to buy that old house. <laughs> Freddie, mind your manners. I'm sorry, Mr. Hathaway. Oh, that's all right. Mr. Hathaway understands he's got three kids of his own. <laughs> well, there it is, Mrs. Brockwood. Probably the best buy in town. But I don't have to tell you about that. You're being a builder. Not exactly. A cement contractor. What do you think, honey? Well, it's a house. And not as pretty as the one we're in now. It's not as noisy, either. No dogs or pigeons next door or daffy neighbors. <laughs> Shall we go in and have a look? Very good 
time. It's only five after three. Okay, now, kids, you help with the bag. But leave the big one for Daddy. And listen, Charlie, then you close the door so we won't know we're home. Then we're going to surprise him with a nice hot dinner. Okay, everybody out. I like this house. Isn't it wonderful how children have an instinct about these things? Well, personally, I think it's a nice enough place, but more important, I like the neighborhood and the neighbors. Well, I suppose it'll look a lot better when it's fixed up. Of course it will. Now, you must remember, you're seeing this house at its worst. Just needs a little cleaning up, a little paint here and there. Just like a woman when she wakes up in the morning. <laughs> well, I didn't mean you, Miss Brockwood. It's just a figure of speech. Look, why don't we continue this discussion over a cup of coffee at my house? Well, a cup of coffee would go good right now. Right this way. If my wife were at home now, we could have a snack. Yeah. And now back to our non-stop conversation show. And here once again, your host. Uh, thank you. And now to continue our discussion of that culinary manifestation known as food. F-O-O-D. Uh, professor? Uh, perhaps if we actually envision the dichotomy involved. What do you envision, Professor? I envision rice check cereal. And why is that? Because we've been talking all night and it's time for breakfast. And I like a light, refreshing meal in the morning. Now, let's consider that. Let's consider it. Let's eat it. Good little, crisp little waffles of toasted rice. That's rice check. Yes, and when you fix them up in your cereal bowl, you'll find that these delicious little rice checks are positively salubrious with your milk and sugar. That's rice checks, and you can get them like this, or try them along with wheat checks and corn checks in the handy new Checks Mates package. Well, gentlemen, it's uh, 6 a.m. Shall we move on to question number two? from the beach and she's not quite ready for visitors yet. So if you just give her a minute to pull herself together. Well, maybe we should come back sometime when it's more convenient. Oh, no, 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 please. Let's talk now while the iron is hot. Please don't go away. Why don't you just sit down here a minute? I'll be right back. Excuse me. Sit down. Walter! <laughs> what happened? Aren't you glad to see us? Am I am, I am. Aren't you going to kiss me? Later, later, not now. I'll smother you with them later. Mm -hmm. Look, we've got to act fast. i got a couple outside who's interested in the house next door. But if they see the children's liable to kill the whole deal. Don't they like children? Yes, but the other kind of children. <laughs> no, I'll explain to you later. <laughs> now, where can I hide the kids? Hide? Oh, I know, I know, I know, I know. In the cellar, in the cellar. I'll be right back. Come on, come on. What's keeping him? Just giving his wife a chance to fix herself up a little bit, make herself attractive to the new neighbors. How long does she need? Maybe that's who he was talking about when he said about women in the morning needing cleaning up and a little paint here and there. A little paint? She's had time for two coats. Mr. Hathaway <laughs> says that he has three kids. It'd be fun to play with them instead of dogs and pigeons. That's my boy. Excuse me, folks. I'm awfully sorry to keep you waiting so long, but you know how fussy women are about their appearance in the morning. Oh, well, it's nearly four o'clock. It is? Well, my wife's fussy in the afternoon, too. <laughs> Please come in. Oh, now you look more like yourself, dear. <laughs> this is Mr. and Mrs. Brockwood. My wife, Eleanor. Hi, how do you way. do? And their little boy, Freddie. Hi. We're sorry to break in on you like this, Mrs. Hathaway, but your husband insisted. Oh, don't worry. It's one of the hazards of being married to somebody in the real estate business. Neither snow, nor hail, nor rain, nor sleet can stop these dedicated men in pursuit of a sale. That's what it says on the post office. They got the idea from the real estate man that sold them the building. <laughs> Freddie, dear, you run out front and play a while. Huh? Won't you come in? Thank you. Oh, I like this living room. You know, I think it's bigger than the one next door. Oh, it's only about six inches different. This is going to be a big saving when you start carpeting. Well, that's one way of looking at it, I guess. Uh, Mrs. Hathaway, I understand you have children. Yes, we have three. Three! <laughs> Are your kids boys? Uh, two males and a female. But... Oh, please, my girl. Is that? She 
just you. Oh, I almost forgot. It must be the plumber. I'll go down the cellar and see how he's doing. Excuse me. I'll be right back. All right, cut that out. Now, you stop it. Now, look, kids, I know it's no fun being shut up down here, but it's only for a little while. Look, let me explain it to you. It's nothing personal, right? <laughs> Stand noise. Well, I spend all day listening to a cement mixer, so when I come home at night, I want quiet. Well, it's only the water pipes. One thing about that house next door, plumbing's in A1 condition. Mrs. Hathaway, you know, I'd like to see what you've done with the children's room. It might give me some ideas. Oh, I'm sure it will. <laughs> Coming, old man? Oh, yes. Oh, a tree. Yes, we think it makes the children feel more at home. This room doesn't get any light in the afternoon like your bedroom's next door. This room is bigger, though, than the one next door. Oh, about four inches. Oh, four inches here, six inches there. First thing you know, a whole room is missing. Yeah, but who would want a ten-inch room? <laughs> you still have trouble with the lights here. Oh, the lights, the lights. Yes, yeah, must be a loose wire. I'll go down and check. Excuse me, again. <laughs> you seem to have quite a bit of trouble with the utilities here. Oh, just the wiring and the plumbing. The phone works great. <laughs> How about that cup of coffee? Good idea. them to show their faces outside this house for at least a month. Is that clear? The Brockwoods have got to find out about the children sooner or later. Well, later is better than sooner. You're being very unfair to the children. You cannot keep them penned up in the house for 30 days. It's like a jail sentence. Where is he going? To his room, and I don't blame him. <laughs> I'm not through talking to him yet. Come here. Word from me, and he does as he pleases. <laughs> He's got my picture. <laughs> Once upon a time, in a far off land, a handsome prince was climbing around one morning when whom should he chance to discover but the Sleeping Beauty herself. Twould seem he was about to kiss the fair maiden when along came... 
breakfast time. I wonder what taste-tempting treasures this here castle holds for breakfast, said he. Mmm, wheat checks. Just the thing, methinks, a real grown-up cereal. For these brave little bite-sized biscuits of shredded wheat have a whole grain texture that keeps them crisp and crunchy, even when they meet up with milk and sugar. Zounds, said he, uh, with his mouth full. What a delicious grown-up flavor. But then a change came over him. For in days of yore, a man, and especially a prince, never got his own breakfast. Hey, you, wake up. <sighs> Bite-sized shredded whole wheat. That's Wheat Chex, the grown-up cereal from Checkerboard Square. Great for kids who want to be like grown-ups, too. be the enemy and daddy doesn't want them to see you. Now you kids stay out here. Oh, hello, oh, Phil. What happened? I have been scrubbing for the past five days and I haven't gotten down to the dirt yet. Well, it took the Davises four and a half years to get the dirt in there and nobody's gonna come along and get it out in a week. <laughs> Look, I wondered if I could borrow your vacuum cleaner. Well, oh, certainly. <laughs> it doesn't sound so hot, but it works fine. How does it sound? Well, the moths ate a couple of holes in the cloth. It kind of wheezes like a bagpipe. <laughs> I'll get it for you. Oh, no, come on, let me oh, get the it. kitchen's kind of messy. You wait right here. I'll get it for you. Walter to come home from stickers. Let me try, huh? Oh, no, Thelma, I don't want you to strain yourself. Don't be silly. I'm not going to strain a thing. Now, come on. <laughs> oh, no, Thelma. Cats out of the bed. Eleanor, these are not cats. You might as well know. These are our children. Oh, Eleanor, you don't mean. I mean, they're adopted, of course. Children? This is Mrs. Brockwood. That's Charlie, <laughs> Enoch, and Candy. I trained them. Wow. <laughs> Gee, they're cute. <laughs> so well behaved. How are you hiding them? Well, we know how violent your husband was about pets, and we thought if we ever knew that we had the children, come on, sweetie, then he'd never take the house. You're so right. Oh, not that I mind your children. You know, I think they're just adorable. Okay, yeah. kids, you go sit over there. You mean you don't object to living next door to them? Not in the least. Bird will blow his top. <laughs> I know. Well, I guess there's nothing to do but refund the money and call off the deal. Oh, I guess so. Gee, I'm sorry. Eleanor, I'm home. What's that? <laughs> Who are those two over there? <laughs> You know, the neighbors don't like pets. You can relax, Walter. Thelma knows the whole story. I told you once, I told you. <laughs> she does? <laughs> Walter, I think your children are wonderful. But you know, we'll never convince Bert. So I suggest you give him back his money. Give him back his money? You call that a suggestion? Can you think of anything else? I don't know, but I wouldn't have thought of that. Oh, the little darling. If only Bert weren't so dead set against pets. You know, it may be hopeless, but I don't think we should give up without a fight. Keep talking, Eleanor. I like that better than your first suggestion about giving back the money. You got a plan, Eleanor? Well, anybody that ever gets to know the children learns to love them. And we've just got to hope that Bert is as human as anybody else. Oh, he is. Sometimes. Here's what we'll do. You bring Bert over to dinner tonight and the two boys. Don't say anything about the children. We'll break the news to him at the right moment. See, after he's had a good dinner under his belt. We'll have a cookout. A barbecue. What do you say, Thelma? Eleanor, what you're asking of me is sneaky, underhanded, and deceitful. I'll see you at seven. <laughs> such a good idea having Bert Brockwood come over tonight. What's wrong with it? 
Well, he tosses around cement bags all day, and when he finds out about the, uh... Well, he's liable to get physical. <laughs> I'll get it. I think I'll go down to the store. We're running short. Short of what? I don't know. I'll think of it on the way down. <laughs> You're not going anywhere. Don't you dare leave me alone. Mine, too. You know, for the longest time, Charlie thought he was chief sitting bull. I could never get him out of his chair. <laughs> Where are the children? They're out in the backyard. Walter set up their little teepee out there. They're all ready to play cowboys and Indians. Cowboys and Indians? Oh, boy! Cowboys! Oh, boy! Don't shoot! <laughs> Where's Bert? Oh, he's tied up on the job. Hello, Thelma. Well, I see Bert couldn't make it. Nothing serious, I hope. Oh, Bert's coming. He's just been delayed a little, that's all. Oh. Well, everything's ready. Well, I hope he's in a good humor tonight. Oh, me too. Every time that cement hasn't been pouring evenly, he comes home in a pretty ugly mood. Uh, well, look, I have an idea. Why make the children wait? Let's sit down and eat right now. When Bert comes in, we can hand him his dinner and take it home with him. <laughs> Here. Hi, neighbor. Hello, Bert. Ah, how are you, Bert? How the cement pour today? Very evenly, smooth as glass. <laughs> good, good. I can't stand lumpy cement. <laughs> now, where are the children? Um, uh, they're playing cowboys and Indians. They're in the teepee having a powwow. <laughs> <laughs> they're gonna have their dinner in there. Hey, Billy the Kid and Davy Crockett. <laughs> Come out and say hello to Chief Big Daddy. Gee, we having fun. Charlie, you need a gorilla and a kid's dad. And Candy's well, too. She's pretty. Ah. <laughs> you hear that? I tell you, that Freddy's gonna be a lady killer. And if Candy takes after her mother, that son of mine's got good taste. <laughs> well, to be perfectly honest, Bert, we don't think that any of the children look like either one of us. <laughs> oh, come now, Eleanor. You're just being modest. Uh-uh. Really? How do you folks like your meat? Uh, well done for me, Walter. Bert likes it practically raw. That figures. <laughs> Say, those are some costumes on your kids. Yes. Children's food's ready. Fine. I'll take in the tray. Oh, no, no, no. That's too heavy for you. Let me take it. <laughs> Here's your dinner, children. <laughs> Say, don't your kids take off their masks when they eat? I have a surprise for you. Oh, what's the surprise? Enoch, Charlie, and Candy are not wearing masks. <laughs> they're not? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean you have ugly kids. I mean, they're not really ugly. They're just, well, they're... <laughs> either. They're ours, and we love them just as much as you love your children. Oh, Walter, I'm proud of you. You call them children? What are you, some kind of a nut? I must be. Otherwise, why would I want a grouch like you for a neighbor? I'm a grouch. You listen to me, you phony double-crosser. What? Now, remember, we're guests here. Besides, Mr. Hathaway is right. You are a grouch. What did they do to you, Thelma? Have you been brainwashed? No, but it's perfectly easy to see that the Hathaways are behaving much better than the Brockwoods. We'll discuss this when we get home. Uh, Come on out, boys. We're going home. Herbert, Freddy. We don't want to go. We like it here. You like it here? Well, tomorrow I'll take you to the zoo. You'll like that even better. <laughs> All right, 
if you won't come out, I'll come in and get you. Now, just you, you. Won't somebody do something? Why don't you try standing on your head? Maybe it'll fall off. Wait a minute. Look, I think Charlie's going to take care of everything. <laughs> More of the Hathaways in a moment. But first, this message from your alternate sponsor. Oh, Walter. <laughs> oh, this turned into a lovely evening after all. Oh, we had fun too, even losing. <laughs> I'm glad you people played bridge. We must do it often. Oh, we will, we will. Let's go, kids. <laughs> Come here, baby. Let's go, kids. Come on. Thanks very much for having me. Wonderful time. Good night. Thanks again. Bye-bye. Well, Eleanor, gotta hand it to you. You sure put that over. Well, you know, I like Thelma. And Bert, too, now that he's found you can't judge children by the color of their fur. Miss Charlie. Okay, folks. I'm buying the house. But don't ever try that again. 